Hi, check it out, y'all. I got a lapel mic. Stepping up in the YouTube reverse. I also have like some lighting and stuff going on, so I'm trying to work on my video production quality. <laughs> I had a video a few weeks ago that was the sound was not great and some of you let me know and so I got a mic. Hopefully this helps solve the problem. Um, it's funny because in my non-sewing life I'm actually a skilled photographer but somehow I just can't seem to redirect that knowledge to video. But I'm working on it and today I have a very very cool tutorial to share with you for this cute patchwork flower pillow. You can actually make this is a velvet one i made my daughter she saw this in an ad or something and said can you make me this so i did then i had the brilliant idea to make a piece patchworky one and i think it's so pretty so i'm excited to share this tutorial with you today um this fabric aren't these pretty it's kind of a fall fabric collection i got this whole fat quarter collection from my latest annie's kit club subscription if you have not watched my video with the review for annie's fat quarter subscription service you can go watch that i'll put it up there one of those sides and you can watch that because every month i get this package in the mail with new fat quarters and i get super excited it's always cute and i always want to use it right away this is probably my most recent favorite i'm sure i'll have a new favorite next time but that's what i decided to make this out of it was nice for this project because I don't often buy coordinating fabrics. I don't know why I don't, but I don't tend to buy fabrics in collections. I just kind of buy what strikes my fancy. And then when I need six matching prints, I have a hard time finding any in my stash. So it's been nice to get these collections that actually go together. So to make this pillow, you're gonna need to go grab the pattern piece. I'm gonna put a link to that in the description and also in the first comment so you can find it really easy from my shop. And You'll need to cut the pattern piece out and then I'll tell you exactly what to do step by step. The pattern piece also comes with the full written instructions with photos so that you can make this flower, flower pillow over and over again for your teens, your kids, your friends, and as gifts. So let's get started. Okay, things you need for this project. Like I said, you need some coordinating fabrics. I used five for this, but you could do six. I repeated my favorite one. Or you need three fourths of a yard of just yardage if you're going to make a one color pillow. They're really cute in velvet. I also made a green one for my other daughter because I had that upholstery velvet on hand. And then I got this velvet on Amazon. I'll link you to what I got because some of it's pretty expensive and this was really reasonably priced. So I'll put a link to that below too. And if I can find this fabric collection, I'll link to that also. Sometimes I get sent collections and then they sell out really fast. So I'll try. Also, you need to go get the pattern. Like I said, yours will be pretty with words on it and stuff. And you also need a large button or a covered button kit. I'm going to show you two different ways to do the button. A more professional upholstery style way, in which case you'll need some upholstery thread. I have waxed upholstery th thread. And either way, you're going to, either way, you will need the longest needle that you have to get it through there. And let's see, oh, an entire bag of fiber fill of stuffing. Or another option is to harvest the stuffing from a pillow that you no longer use, which is what I did for this one. I had like an outdoor pillow that was not being used, so I stole the stuffing from it. Okay, so if you're going to make the pieced pillow, you just need to print one of this page of the pattern, and you're going to cut the pattern out on the outside lines. Your pattern, your pattern piece will have that notation on there. If you're going to make a solid pillow, you need to print three of this page and cut it out on the inner lines. This one, no seam allowances, and then tape them together. Then you will place this edge on the fold of your fabric to cut out one flower and then do that again to cut out two. So I'm gonna make the pieced pillow today, but you can follow along anyway, even if you're making the solid one, and you'll just skip the piecing part. Okay, so this time, instead of picking six different fabrics, I'm going to use the same fabric, but since it's striped, I thought it would be interesting to lay them out with the stripes all cut horizontally so that kind of makes a cool design. I tried to find fabrics in my stash that match this stripe, which I love, and I couldn't because, like I said, I don't buy fabrics that match each other. <laughs> I really need to fix that about myself. Okay. So, and then on the back, I'm just using this black and white print. I thought that'd be cute. 
So the first thing you need to do is we're going to sew these together in two halves. So I'm going to sew these three together and then I'll sew these three. So the first thing is to sew this edge together in a quarter inch seam and I'm going to press it toward the outside petal. Okay, I got ahead of myself and realized I did not actually give you cutting instructions. For the patchwork pillow, you're going to cut, if you're using different fabrics, you need two petals each, because one for the front and one for the back. I just cut six of my front fabric and six of my backing fabric. And then, like I said, if you're making a solid pillow, you cut two of this on the fold, so you end up with two large flower pieces. Okay, so you can see, since I pressed my seam out for the outer petal, I still have this flap here. Some people can get confused in sewing corners of three together like this. So then when I lay this next petal on top, it matches this dog ear exactly. So I'm gonna go sew this one on next. Okay, so now when you have all three sewn together, you should have your corner be about a quarter inch from the solid edge. Your corner should not come all the way down. If yours didn't turn out perfectly, that's okay. Just trim it up to be straight. Because also remember, you're going to put a button in the middle. <laughs> so if your corners don't match perfectly, it's totally fine. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing with these. Okay, let me cut off my little dog ear. So next I'll just put them right sides together and stitch that in a quarter inch seam. Make sure my centers match. Don't worry if it's not perfect. Remember the button. I'll go sew this next. All right, here's my finished front. This seam I pressed open. So my front is done. I love how these stripes look. This, these colors are so retro, I love it. Okay, so I'm gonna put that aside and then I will do the back the same way. If you're using all different fabrics and you want them to match on front and back, you can't actually make the back the same exact pattern as you made the front. You need to mirror it. So when I made mine, I laid each counterpart face down on the right fabric so that I knew which order I was going to sew them into. If you sew them the same, then they're going to be, they're going to end up on the opposite petal instead of the same petal. I hope that makes sense. All right, my back is also done. So now I lost my front. Oh, here it is. Now all we need to do is place them right sides together, as you would probably guess, and match up all of our petals. We're going to pin them we're going to leave an opening, a hands width opening on one petal. So I like to put two pins where I'm going to start and stop so that I don't forget. Match them all up evenly and pin. So when you sew this, we're going to use a quarter inch seam again but we're going to stop in each corner and pivot to turn. So we're not just gonna make curved edges. We're going to stop right in the seam with your needle down, lift up your presser foot, turn and keep going. So we're going to make a nice and neat corner in between each petal and make sure you leave your opening. Okay, here's what I meant by pivoting at my corners. You can see you have nice edges there. Now we're going to clip into every corner to the stitching, but not through it. This is a very important step. If you skip it, your corners will not turn right side out properly. So this is the same if you're making the solid pillow too. Always clip inside corners, but make sure not to clip through your stitches. Right up to the edge, see? Okay, now we will turn her right side out through the opening. So cute. Okay, most people probably would not press the edges of something they're about to stuff anyway. But in this case, I'm going to, especially because I'm going to hand stitch this curved edge closed. I'm going to go ahead and neatly press it, quote, press it in a quarter inch with my iron. It will just look nicer in the end. And I'm going to just go press all these edges, kind of just for grins. <laughs> now I'm going to get my bag of stuffing. And I'm going to put all of this stuffing inside my pillow. It will be firm, but not super packed tight because we still need to be able to tuft the middle of it. So here I go. 
Okay, my, pretty, my pillow is pretty full. I actually use a little bit more than the one bag. I used some stuffing from that same pillow that I used to stuff the other one. So maybe I'll adjust the instructions to use a little bit more. So make sure that each petal is stuffed pretty evenly. And then you can go ahead and hand stitch this opening closed. When I made my flower pillow with all different fabrics, I made sure to leave my opening on one of the fabrics that was darker and busier so that it would be more likely to hide my stitches. And so as invisibly as I can. We'll knot it twice. Okay, I'm gonna give it a shake. So the stuffing goes into that remaining petal. And now it's time for the button. Okay, you have a few different ways of doing this. You can choose a large button and you can simply thread a long needle and sew that sucker on, cinching it as tight as you can. It's helpful to have a buddy so that you can have someone hold it while you try to knot it. It can be complicated, but you can do it. That is exactly what I did for this velvet pillow. See, it has no button on the back, just a stitch. I have some heavy duty thread that was helpful, but for this version, I actually watched a tufting tutorial video. I will try to find that again and link you to it because it was really helpful by an actual upholsterer. And I learned some things. So I have this very long needle. I have extra long upholstery thread and I have a covered button kit. I love cover buttons. They are really easy to use. I'm going to show you how to make a cover button right now. Okay, I have this mustard colored scrap that I wanted to use for my buttons because it goes cute with this. Okay, so I'm going to cut a square larger than my covered button. You can buy these kits at any fabric store. Mine's from Hobby Lobby. So it comes with this. Sorry, I just ran up the stairs. Now I'm out of breath. Okay, it comes with this silicone dish. So you're going to put your fabric, the smooth side of this metal part down and pop it into the dish. Then you're going to trim it. This is a bigger button than I used for my patchwork pillow. I thought the big one would be fun. So the smaller your button, the less space you have to shove this fabric in. But my button's pretty big, so I'm leaving maybe half an inch, five eighths. Then you shove it into the center. Then you put this piece on top and this is your little tool. Put that on, press with your thumbs until it pops inside. The thicker your fabric, the more pressure it might take, but this popped in real easy. Then you have a cover button. So let me make one more. Okay, voila, two buttons. Here's the tufting part. You need strong thread. This is extra strong upholstery thread. Cut a length of it, maybe two feet. And you're going to thread it through one button, like so. Then you need the longest needle you can find and you may still need a pair of pliers. This is a doll needle. They make upholstery needles that are even longer. But I thought this size would be fine and more versatile. I, think I might actually use it for other things. Thread both ends through the upholstery needle. I also bought a waxed upholstery button thread and that's what I used for this version, but it was kind of messy. And most people might not be able to find that. So this time I'm just using unwaxed upholstery thread. So both ends are through the needle eye. I'm going to stick the needle all the way through my pillow, bring it up on the other side. And then I'm done with the needle. You can put that aside. Then I'm going to thread my other button through just one thread through the eye of the next button. The eye, what they call a post. Okay, then I'm going to create a slip knot with these two threads. This yellow looks so cute on the back of this. Okay.
Hey, then I should be able to pull mightily until it can't be pulled anymore. Like I said, another set of hands can be helpful. Then I'm going to make a square knot. So a square knot means you tie it like you normally would. Cinch. Like normally I would tie right over left. This time I'm going to tie left over right. And tie it. Then I can cut these threads short. Okay. So cute. I definitely got it more tufty with the wax thread, but most people will have strong thread on hand and this worked just as well. So I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial. If you make some of these pillows, I would love to see them. You can tag me on Instagram and make sure you give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. That helps YouTube know that you liked it and that you want to see more videos like this. So I hope you all have a great day and I'll see you soon.